Richard. Check. Anytime, Julia. Okay, so one second. Go to your room. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, so I am ready. I will think one, two, three. Uh, good evening, everyone. Tonight is the finance committee meeting for May 12, 2020. And the first uh, order in the agenda is to call to order. So do we have a quorum? Yes, you do. Everyone there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Next in our, uh, um, our agenda is the approval of the minutes for the April 28, 2020. Do I have a, do, don't we need to? I need a motion. Mm -hmm. I need a motion to approve the uh, the minutes from the April 28th um, finance committee meeting. A motion to approve the minutes from uh, April 28th, 2020 finance meeting. Do I have any question? No? Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes from the April 28th, 2020 minutes say aye. Aye. Nays. The motion carries. Next is our agenda is the public appearances for non-agenda items. Do we have anyone in the audience? I cannot see from here. We don't. No? Okay. So next move. Next is our agenda is the finance director report. So Misty. Yep. So big things happening in our office right now would be finishing up the audit. Um, so the auditors are on schedule to come to our next meeting to do our audit presentation. So they should be here for then. And then the other big thing is the CIP that we're working on. So the mayor's CIP is released in just a couple of weeks. Um, and then you'll see me at the May Committee of the Whole meeting to talk about like financial policies and process and that type of thing. So I'm uh, kicking off that next big piece. And then another heads up thing for you, the, I'm sure you've heard about the act that was approved at the state level that authorized us to delay or defer property tax payment collections. Um, so in order for that to happen, First, the county had to pass a resolution authorizing it. Uh, Dane County did approve that this last week. Um, okay. So the next step then would be uh, the city of Fitchburg would have to pass a resolution that allows that. I'm um, basically saying that the entire city is having a financial hardship because of COVID-19. And we are therefore allowing the deferral of the property tax payments without interest and penalty until I think it's October. Um, we'll have to pass the resolution even though it has minimal effect on us as a city. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have uh, Dane County do all of the collection for us after that first installment and they already keep the interest and penalty that's collected. So there's no financial, um, direct financial impact to the city. Uh, the one thing that will happen is the uh, the settlement will be delayed by about a month. So the settlement in August, which is usually when we get made whole, uh, will just include the taxes that have been collected. And then they'll do the made whole settlement in September. So we will have a little bit of an implication because we'll get our cash one month later than what we're used to. I mean, honestly, I'm not worried about that one month delay if the, if the county is supportive of it. So I'll put that resolution through for council and finance to discuss at the next meeting. Um, Aaron's already authorized a draft referral. It doesn't affect people until July, but I know there's gonna start being questions. So we thought we'd get that in front of you guys soon. So you'll see that at the next meeting. Okay. That's it. That's it. Any question for Misty? No? Nope. Okay. Thank you, Misty. Next, uh, we are going to review our bills. So the first uh, is the detailed review of check for $10,000 and above, dated April 16, 2020 to April 30, 2020, totally $1,313,779 with 41 cents. Do we have any question about those bills? No? I, I do have one question. I'm just... Okay. Uh, Gabriela. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about the... I should move over here. On, uh, on page six, I'm curious about the William Ryan Home refund deposit. I just am not clear on what, what, that, what the uh, reasons for that is. I wonder if you could explain that to me. So when uh, plats or new developments are approved, oftentimes there will be a deposit that's required at the time to make sure that certain things happen. And then as long as those things happen, we reimburse them that the amount of the deposit that's left or the whole amount. Um, 
and then that money is available. So if for whatever reason that thing wasn't done, then we would have money in order to do that on their behalf. Um, so this is the rest of the deposit that we were holding for that development because everything was completed as required. Got it. Great. Any other question? I have some questions about the less than 10,000. Do we wait for the next? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next we move to the detailed review of all checks issue. Uh, check number 120756-120800 dating from April 16, 2020 to April 30, 2020, totally 1,403,202 with 9 cents. Any question there? I, I, I have some question, but I called Mistin during the day and she uh, clarified for me, so I am not gonna ask the same question. Okay. I'm, I have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, page nine, the Oregon school district buses. I'm curious about that. We're laughing because that was the question Julia asked okay. earlier. <laughs> so she should have asked. <laughs> you want to know what that is? I assume. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Yep. So our it's a program through our recreation department. So it was a ski trip that people could sign up through our rec department, and then we paid the cost, including the bus and the the resort fees and all of that stuff. Um, as a program. So it's not the city supplementing a school district program. That's not what's happening. It's when we did our program, we used school district buses to do the transportation because it was a more finance, a more better fiscal option. Got it. Great. Any other question? I, I have one more. Okay. Hold on. Just, I'm just looking at my notes. Hang on. I have a question. Uh, there is an, an, an invoice for $3,000 from Ehlers, an associate from Arbitrage. What are those services for? Yep, so uh, Arbitrage is every five years after we issue, a, issue debt, we have to go through an exercise to make sure that we met all of the IRS requirements as okay. far as spend down, so how fast we spend the money, how much money, how much interest we earned on the money, that mm -hmm. type of a thing. Um, so I put all that information together, but Ellers does that final report, kind of like a check and balance to make sure that okay. we're in compliance. So this was in regards to the 2015 arbitrage that was issued. And if you go back a couple of finance committee meetings, the report that they issued would be in the packet. Okay. And I have one more as well. Uh, that same page, page 12, I was looking at the MSA professional services, the presentation of the Housing Advisory Committee. I was curious about that. So MSA did the housing study for us. Uh, so they then presented that housing study at that advisory committee meeting and charged us for their time. Great. Mm -hmm. But I have an, a question regarding that. That one is Jason, isn't it? Jason? That I'm not sure. Yeah. So every time that we invite him to the housing advisory, he's going to send us a deal. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So generally how that works is in our RFPs or our requests for quotes, we'll include a certain number of meetings. Mm -hmm. And then if there's additional yeah. meetings requested, that's usually an additional expanded scope that they'll charge us for. Mm -hmm. Any other question? I, yes, I have one question. Uh, this is on page... 10 and continues on to 11 for the, the seasonal salt. Is that, and I see a number of entries, is that something for the, the upcoming winter or is this for the previous winter or is this not at, for winter at all? I do see seasonal and salt. I mean, it is a good good dollar amount of 104,000. Yep, so I, I'd have to double check to be sure, but I believe that that is our quota. So as part of the state contract, we're required to get a certain amount of salt, and it is that road salt that you're thinking of. Sure. And then we had a relatively light winter, so we didn't quite meet that quota, but we did have to take at least that amount. So this would be um, the amount that's, that was left that we were required to take. From this past winter, not going forward. From this past winter, but we'll use it going forward. Going forward. So it's sitting in our salt shed at this point. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yep. Any other question? Okay, so next we are moving to the detailed review of the ACH payment for $10,000 and above. 
April 2020 in the amount of $492,824.72. So any question there? No? No questions. No, nothing, Please. thank you. Okay. And then we need we have a detailed review all of all of ACH payment for April uh, 2020 for in the amount of 501,210 with 47 cents. Any question there? No questions for me. Okay. None for myself either. Thank you. Okay, so then, uh, next we move to the action items. Um, we are gonna is Mike in the is Mike there? Bill. Okay, so we are going to keep this one for later. Uh, the fish hatchery update road. So next we are moving to I need a motion to approve resolution R-88-20 authorizing accepting of the East Fire Station Solar Improvement Bid. I'll make a motion to approve resolution R-88-20 authorizing accepting of the East Fire Station Solar Improvements Bid. Second. If... Okay, so I have, uh, Ma Pat is going to talk about this? Otherwise I can. Yeah, Misty can do this one. Sure. I have so a they... question. Did they have a, a meeting in Board of Public Works? Public Works has... He went Many to Public Works before. So I... I'm going to guess that they approved it. I didn't hear otherwise. Okay. So that would be my guess. Uh, so yeah, it was. The... Um, oh, go ahead. Public Works uh, meets next on May 18th. They um, have not. Uh, they have not met yet in regards to this. So is this going back to Public Works, or we are going to approve it here in council and? That's correct. We'll approve it here in council. Okay. Uh, it, Misty can explain. It was part of the uh, budget process, so it's already been seen by um, all the committees and things and uh, bodies in the past. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is on the newly constructed fire station, it was included in the project, the assumption that we would have solar on that building. Uh, they did do bids as required under public construction, and you can see we're recommending the low bid. And, and I just was... checked, oh, I'm sorry, I just checked the Board of Public Works agenda, and they did meet on it on May 4th. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. I, I just have Mike's notes here, and they say meeting on May 18th. I, I wasn't aware they met. Yeah. Okay, okay. so on this, um, this project, it was in our budget, mm -hmm. and it came on the budget, or? So the total uh, earmark of the total overall construction budget was $185,000 which would have included design. So I think it was a little bit more than that kind of earmark within the construction budget, but the overall construction budget is sufficient to include this in the project. Okay. So my understanding based on reading the packet was that it was under budget by about 30,000 some dollars. Is that correct? I'm yeah, I, I, I see in the notes here, it was under budget by uh, 29,197. Um, I asked that because I'm curious what what happens when we go under budget with the project. Is it is there like I don't know what happens with the with the uh, underage? I guess. <laughs> so this is a project that we borrow money for. So uh, there's very specific requirements when you borrow money, especially with bonds, which is what this would be. Uh, so I don't borrow all of the money at the beginning of the project. I do it throughout multiple years as we need the money. Um, so we haven't borrowed the full amount that's required for this yet. When I borrow at the end of this year, I'll look back and see how much we think we actually will need to finish out the project, um, which I don't think we'll have to do much. So uh, if for whatever reason we do borrow money for this, let's say I did borrow all of it and there was money left over, because they are bonds, there's a lot of requirements. It would have to be used on something else for the fire station. 
And if not, then I'm obligated to spend the money to reduce the amount that I pay for that debt. So if I borrow $2 million and I have a $200,000 payment, I have to use that overage to pay that $200,000 payment that next year. And uh, may, I, may I speak, Julia? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I misspoke now. Um, I don't... It just says here that the city has sufficient funds in the budget uh, for this project, as Misty noted. But the $29,000 was a focus on energy grant that we received for this project also. So the focus on energy, um, uh, basically 30000 will go towards this project. Okay. So, um, okay. Fine. Any other question? I do have one general question, and this doesn't have to be discussed here, but I would be interested maybe at a committee of the whole meeting to go into the, the bid selection process and how that works, um, and, and also like how it relates to the new responsible bidder ordinance that was passed last earlier this year, or last year. Um, and I, I just would overall be curious about that, and I don't know how I get, can I, should I talk to you about getting that on the agenda for a future meeting, or? Yeah, we Julia, could. is that you, should I talk to? We can yeah. definitely mm -hmm. do that. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, and I sent an email to all the elders requesting, you know, if you have any topics that you would like to see in the committee of the whole, send it to me. So, because, um, you know, uh, Misty and I, we are already working on the next couple of the, mm -hmm. the next, in the next three months, Misty is gonna be our guest. <laughs> Uh, to go through some financial procedures and other stuff from the budget and CIP plan. So, um, so okay. So, and I have some openings one of those months. So we can, we can, you know, we can add this topic. Sounds great. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so all of in favor of approving resolution R dash eighty eight dash twenty CI. Aye. Aye. Nays, the motion carries. Next, I look at, uh, I need a motion to approve resolution R-90-20, approval of the swing set and playground structure for the Terravisa South Park. Uh, motion to approve resolution R-90-20, approval of swing set and playground structure for Terravisa South Park. Second. Okay, so who is going to This is, um, this was approved by Parks, and it is for uh, the first um, developed uh, park in Terravasa. It's located in close proximity to the, the homes that you see constructed out there now. And this is just for both the play structure. There are two separate uh, play structures. One is the play structure, the other is the swing set. This is pretty standard when we have new subdivision. So, um, any question about this? Okay, all those in favor of resolution R-90-20, approval of the swing set, say aye. 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 Nays, the motion carry. Next, I am looking for a motion to approve resolution R-95-20, authorizing acceptance of, of the Burn, what can you pronounce? Burn? Burn, I think. Burn, porn, retrofit bin, and budget amendment. This is a direct referral. I make a motion to approve resolution R-95-20, authorizing acceptance of the burn pond retrofit bid and budget amendment direct referral. Second. Okay, um, I have Mike's notes here, so I can go into this if that's okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, the city is pursuing a retrofit to the burn dry pond to provide water quality benefits to increase infiltration prior to the discharging of stormwater from the neighborhood. This project was presented to the neighborhood at public meetings on May 1st, 2019, March 13th, 2019, and February 25th, 2020. Work with the park parcel was presented to the Parks Commission on March 5th, 2020 and approved by the Parks Commission on May 7th of this year. 
The Parks or the Public Works Department followed a number of procedures to ensure that all area contractors completing this type of work were informed of the city's bid. The bid was posted on Quest CND, which is the online bid um, service, on March 23rd, 2020, and advertised by legal notice in the Wisconsin Journal on March 26th and April 2nd of this year. The city received four bids for this project on April 17th of this year. The cost of the project is $314,528.80. In CIP project 4702, the city allocated $150,000 funded by the stormwater utility for this project. $24,512 has already spent, been spent on the design services and 125,488 is remaining. The city obtained a matching grant from the DNR from the amount of 32,175, and the city anticipates receiving a grant from Dane County this Thursday would be the announcement of that grant we hear, which will cover up to 50% of the total project cost or 182,175. This would allow the city to increase the budget by $339,838 without increasing money out of our pocket. The low bid was by Badgerland Excavating Corporation from Madison in the amount of $314,528.80 and an additional $15,000 5% contingency. Um, this would require a two-thirds vote when we get to council because it is a budget amendment. So um, I'd, I'd like to say I'm, I'm here for any questions, but that was a pretty thorough explanation from Mike there. <laughs> no, yeah, I remember uh, I, I, I watched the neighborhood meeting that it was done in April 25th this year. And I remember way back that the, bu the original budget for this project was $150,000 and then um, for some reason it escalated to three hundred more. But, I, uh, but the, the Dane County um, grant is for sure um, is, uh, is a yes that we are getting that grant. Um. It's anticipated that we're going to get it, and the project is contingent upon. Um, oh, okay. The, I'm sorry. The approval of the council and this body is contingent upon getting the grant. Okay. So, so if we don't get the grant, we are not going to proceed with this. That's correct. Um, but it's anticipated we will get the grant on Thursday. Okay. Any other question? No? No. No. All those in favor of resolution R-95-20 say aye. 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 Nays. The motion carried. Next, I need approval of resolution R-97-20 approving the first amendment to the intergovernmental agreement with the town of Verona to complete a study of Goose Lake. This is a direct referral. Okay. Motion to approve resolution R9720 approving first amendment to the intergovernmental agreement with the town of Verona to complete a study of Goose Lake. Okay, uh, another thorough explanation uh, coming here from Mike. Fitchrona Road has seen periodic flooding near US 151 underpass. Uh, the flooding has resulted in road closures affecting both the city of Fitchburg and the town of Verona residents. An intergovernmental agreement was put in place by the city of Fitchburg and town of Verona uh, to complete a joint study to determine what modifications can be made to improve flood conditions. This amendment to the intergovernmental agreement is necessary because funds are needed to complete the study that, outlined, that was outlined in the original intergovernmental agreement. 
The Public Works Department followed a number of procedures to ensure that all area consultants completing this type of work were informed of the city's request for proposal. The RFP, Request for Proposal, was advertised by legal notice in the Wisconsin State Journal and posted on the uh, bid website, which is questcdn.com. City received four proposals for this project on March 20th of this year. A review committee consisting of two city representatives and two town representatives reviewed the proposals on March 25th of this year and evaluated them based on a set of criteria as outlined in the RFP. And was select, uh, I'm sorry, an AE2S was selected as the top firm. The city and town staff met with AE2S on March 31st, 2020 to renegotiate the scope, timeline, and, and cost to better meet the city and town's need. The cost of this project is $42,840, and the proposal for the town and city is evenly split uh, to split the additional costs. The city's share of the cost must increase by $6,420 from $15,000 to $21,420. Staff felt that this level of study was warranted to allow for the modeling of proposed solutions. This is important because it, if flood eleva elevations are altered, which is the goal of this study, then modeling results will, be need, will need to be submitted to FEMA before improvements can be installed. In addition, public outreach meetings are considered necessary uh, to the success of this project and errors were found in previous models of the contributing water set, watershed so some amount of rework will need to be done in those areas. The funds for this additional expense can be taken from the same CIP 4713. 25,000 was allocated for the installation of a culvert under Fitchrona Road in 2020. Installation of this culvert can be delayed until Fitchrona Road is resurfaced. Additional funds for stormwater improvements for the road will be requested as part of that CIP. And again, uh, this will be, require a budget amendment and a two-thirds vote by council once it gets there. And this was approved at Public Works on May 4th, and it's before you right now. Okay, uh, so I have a couple of questions. Um, so when, uh, how long is it going to take to do this study? Um, I believe it's supposed to be complete by this fall. Okay. So, and then the idea is to, they are going to come up with the solution to how to, you know, to fix that issue with the goose lake. So, okay. So it's another summer that maybe we are going to have some issues again, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Raining. Yeah. Okay. Basic, no, I, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically, the the issue here, we know sort of what the issue is. It's it's how, how do we get to a solution, but the water isn't flowing uh, to mm -hmm. the south in Goose Lake. It's just sort of sitting. And when we have rain events, the water elevates and isn't moving appropriately. So this study will come up with recommendations as to how to move the water to the south and west. Southwest. Southwest? Yep. Southwest, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any question? Yes, I have one. Okay. The culvert that's going to that's been proposed is that just a proposal, or w will that be placed even after the study? Uh, the culvert will be necessary um, because the water that is on the east side of the road will have to get into Goose Lake on the west side of the road. Okay. But we don't want to put the, the culvert in until the study's done because the road will have to be resurfaced later and there might be some changes in elevation and such at that point. We want to make sure that uh, we don't have to redo the road twice. You want to do the right job. Yeah. The right job and put the culvert in once the road's getting replaced. Okay, very good. 
Any other question? No. Okay, all those in favor of resolution R-97-20 say aye. 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 Nays, the motion carries. Okay, so, so we are at the end of our action items. Uh, is Mike there? Uh, neither Mike nor Bill are the, are here. Um, oh, my bad. I, I yeah, I can I can report for them though that I have been providing regular uh, updates from the contractor you've seen via email to the council. Um, we do know as of today that the that the Fish Hatchery Road project is on schedule. Um, they are having. Um, uh, they are, or they had to make some adjustments to the traffic signals due to the uh, amount of traffic that's getting backed up going northbound on Fish Hatchery Road, but they believe those modifications have resulted in better traffic flow. Um, as you'll see, uh, rock crushing has begun um, in close proximity to the old uh, juice plant. The, there's a pile of stone that was taken up that stone is being crushed and used as the uh, first lay layer of base for the new road. Um, so anybody that um, would have questions as to what is happening with that pile of stone, it's gonna result in some of the base surface for that road eventually. And so they actually took that from, but they took that stone from like the right next to it? And we're the, really using it? The stone is actually, the pile of stone is actually the old roadbed that they um, broke up and now they're um, crushing it and recycling it. Okay. Wow, it's very striking. When I drove by it the first time, I was like, oh, oh. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big pile of yeah. stone. <laughs> so the other question is, uh, I know that they are working on the Pike Drive, the East Pike Drive. So, um, so you have an update on that one? Yeah, that project is part of the Fish Hatchery Road project, so the same crews working on that. As, you, as you've noticed, probably they've cleared all of the woodland uh, through there. Uh, they're currently working on the detention basins that will be required uh, for not only the Pike Drive extension, but some of that stormwater from the Fish Hatchery Road project itself. So you'll, you'll notice that there's, there's a very large detention basin being built. Uh, Pike Drive will be constructed about halfway uh, back mm -hmm. towards index at that point. And um, it will be uh, bulkheaded or dead-ended there. Um, the rest of the road will be completed once a development comes forward uh, for that parcel. Yeah. I. I intentionally ask you about that because there are some confusion in some Facebook pages about what is going there. Right. <laughs> some neighbor are, still, you know, making an assumption that there was another extension of the Avalon property, you know, <laughs> some more apartment. So uh, it's a road. I tell, I, I wrote, it's a road, you know, that are, you know, so. At, yeah, yeah. At, yeah. At this point in time, all that's going in is half the road. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And oh, the detention okay. basin. Yep. Um. Another. Since we are in fish hatchery, do you know when is the uh, affordable senior housing will be open? It's open now. Oh really? Yeah. The, you're talking about the on. Um, Traceway, the, the senior. Yes, yes mm -hmm. that project's open. People have moved in May 1st, the oh, first wave of move-ins. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and do you know anything, how they are, you know, how they're doing? They're doing how very they well. Uh, they leased up, uh, I believe, up upwards of 90% leased up oh. there. Wow. Give or take. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and they are doing a schedule of move-ins to make sure that there isn't a lot of people mm -hmm. at once gathering, and obviously they have to use the elevators and stuff for moving, so they're doing that by schedule. Okay. 
Okay, so good to know. Any other question for Pat about the fish hatchery role? No? Okay, um, uh, any announcement? Our next meeting is gonna be May 26. Anything else that we need to share? No? No. Okay. Nope. So I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor to adjourn the meeting, say aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned at 7.07. Okay, thank you.